Well, hi guys, welcome to the session. My name's Paul, this is Plan Z, and hopefully this finds you very well. I've been asked to dive into compression. Someone's trying to kind of do a little bit of a Pink Floyd thing and uh, has asked me to kind of, uh, you know, have a little look at the comps. He's struggling a little bit with getting them to feel right. So I thought I'd have a proper little deep dive into this, but I'm going to try and keep it really short. Um, in this patch, I've put four compression uh, blocks. We have uh, eight compressors. Going to be getting my compressors and compression the wrong way around today. <laughs> it's got to be one of those. It's Sunday here in uh, cold UK. Um, hopefully it's warmer where you are. Um, but yeah, I've got a Sunday mouth. So down the front here, I've put some compressors. Down the back here, I've put another compressor. Now we've got six compressors. Compressors. We have a bass compressor. I'll be doing a video on that in the bass deep dives. Um, uh, we also have something called the X Comp, which is a dynamic compressor, which uh, will work with the EQ frequencies. I'm going to be doing a separate video on on the X Comp, um, but in this comp, we're going to be looking at the other comps, and one of those other comps is the stereo comp which is if you were recording in a studio, the uh, mixer is probably going to be putting a compressor at the end of his chain on you, um, whether you like it or not, for the mix. Yeah? Um, so I, I'm taking the same kind of strategy here. Um, now, I won't do this with all tones, but with most tones, I'll be doing this. And what I'll do is I'll work out, and it's taking a little minute with the Boss compressors because they don't give us the regular master compressor settings, they just give us the generic guitar monkey ones with sustain and attack. We get ratio, but we get no threshold, we get no release, any of that good information. We've just got to kind of figure it out here. So what I've done is I've taken a mastering, what I think is a mastering style of compression using this block, where the ratio here, um, and if you don't know about the ratio, if you imagine the screen is your signal, but it's lumpy, your signal has got lots of peaks and troughs like valleys, well, the compressor will reduce the transients, the low and high transients, and squash your signal so it's fatter and less dynamic, rather than being wider and kind of, think of it as being wide and spindly versus uh, short and fat. Okay, so we're kind of doing this when we compress, but here I'm using a very subtle compression, a 1.2 uh, to 1 I've gone in the end. Uh, 1.2 to 1 is very little compression, and all it's doing is going to be helping, helping uh, the guitar and the reverbs kind of glue together. I don't want it to change my tone, so hopefully this will work out. We're on the back pickup of a telly. We've got two different styles of amp in here. We've got my twin. And we've got a deluxe going into a Princeton 110. I think I need to turn up the volume on my uh, twin though. Hang on. Before we... Yeah, I do... Okay, lovely, we can get back into the, sorry, a little bit of housekeeping there. I've only just set the patch up, <laughs> just for this video, in fact. Um, so down here, what I want to do is I'm going to put this compressor on, and I'm just going to uh, see it, how it changes the tone. I don't want it to change the level. I don't want it to change the tone. I want it to feel almost exactly the same, but just kind of a bit more solid, uh, thicker, fatter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the reverb on now on a slightly longer and I'll just I'll turn the compressor on because it'll be more obvious when I turn it on uh, on the overspill of a reverb and then I'll start playing with some chords so that although it felt sounded like it got louder it didn't it just got fuller it, we just condensed the transient so we're hearing more of that the lows low transients with the higher transient <laughs> Turn that off. Going to pull my verb back. Yeah, it, 
feels kind of just a touch thicker, fatter, almost like it's coming out of a cabinet. It's just giving a bit of thump to the tone. I'm not changing my tone. Let's go to a high gain, see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so it's, I don't feel like it's affecting my tone too much there, so I'm going to leave that like that. Now here I've left the sustain and the attack in the middle. We're going to get into this in a little minute. And we're going to get more into these settings here. Let's do this now. Let's come down to the front of the chain. Where we've got three compressors lined up. We've got the Boss Comp, which is modeled on the CS3, I believe. We've got... Uh, the D comp, which is the MXR donor comp al algorithm. And then we've got orange comp, which is modeled on the orange squeeze from the 70s, the one you kind of stick onto your guitar uh, strap um, and kind of plug in there, really. A bit clumsy. We don't have many controls on that pedal. Uh, so we have a lot more controls in the Boss GT1000. And on the MXR model, there's only really two knobs on the Dyna comp, but here we've got a bit more control over that. Now here with the Boss comp, what I've done is I've tried to dial, dial them in ever so slightly differently to do ever so slightly different jobs, and then we're gonna stack them. Remembering we've already got a compressor on at the end of the chain down here, okay? So. <laughs> Right, so now we've got that one on. We're on the back pickup. Let's stick on the first compressor. Now it's giving me a little bit of a volume bump. I'm using it for that. It's also, I'm using a kind of what I would say a soft compressor here. So uh, the stronger than my mastering compressor, I've gone to a two to one ratio here because I plan to stack this into another compressor, which we'll talk about in a minute. Here I've got the dry mix coming through at 50% because I want a good strong, uh, not color my signal too much. I'm using the Boss Comp for this because it doesn't really color your signal too much, okay? Um, and here I've left the tone in the middle. Now you can give yourself some more brightness or make it duller by using the tone. We'll experiment with this in a minute, but I just want to show you how I'm setting up. Now I'll level it. With, with a compressor, you're often tweaking two or three different things, okay? So, but what you, what you want to note is this. If you want to squash your signal and take all the attack transient and squash it down so it's the same as the quieter transients, put your attack on full, but you'll lose some attack, if that makes sense. Ironically, when you turn up the attack on the compressor, what it's doing is turning down your attack and pulling it in line with the rest of your signal. So if you want your attack to pop through the compressor and then compress your signal, have your attack lower. So I've pulled the attack here to 40 because I really want the attack of my guitar to come through. And I have the sustain down at 40 as well, about the same, okay? Um, and then I've just brought the level up to where I want the level to be. And here, I've ended up on a level of 50. So it's giving... Now the thing to note here is if I go... What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put on a beat and a bass, all right? And I'm just gonna play some single notes. And as I go up the neck of the guitar there, I lose a little bit of volume on the thinner strings just because they're thinner, okay? Let's turn on the, this compressor. Things are more even. I still have a bit of dynamic. Okay, so I can still kind of quieten myself down. Let's turn that off. I can still quieten myself down. Um, and we're not squashing the signal too much. And it helps me just 
have for little picking parts or rhythmic picking parts gives me a bit of compression there or if I want to do a little bit of a lead thing I can just do a little widdly and just pop the compressor on there and it'll just help um, the dynamics come through even though I'll be losing some of my dynamics those dynamics are getting lost in the mix anyway all right because we're competing against bass and drums now we're not in the room on our own so in our bedroom so that compressor is set like this Let's turn on the MXR model. Now, we've got a, a slightly different noise floor here. We've, we're on single calls and I'm standing only, you know, very close to the unit here while I'm filming. So we can hear, probably hear a bit of buzz. Yeah. So we get a bit of noise floor with this one, I've noticed. Or at least I do in my unit. Let me know in the comments if you do with yours. Now, I've set it up the same way. Only we've got a higher level here because I've got less of the direct mix and I'm squashing it more on a, on a ratio of five to one. Now I found that the, this um, compressor kind of shapes your mids a little bit as well. And I just wanted to bump the tone here because I'm going to use it to kind of solo with. Um, so let's turn it off and we'll go uh, with no compressor. We'll try the first compressor and then this compressor. Now in the room, and this is something that you can, I don't know if it will come across with YouTube's compressors on my audio, but I can really feel the squish and hear a bit more of a squish there with what I'm doing. Okay. And this will give me some consistency if I take that away. Those that the bend jumps out. I lose a bit of level there. Put the compressor on. got this one as I say set to do just a little bit of a solo I'm going to stack um, the first compressor into it in a minute I'm also going to stack into an orange comp so the orange squeeze let's turn it on as I say we would only have one control on this if I remember right and that is on and off um, and then there was a modification to it where you had juice and you could add juice um, but what they were doing with that would be affecting certain parameters at once, multiple parameters at once. So here we've got more control. So what I've done is I've set it up the same way as the others. Um, but this, uh, same with the MXR one, with slightly less of the dry mix, and I've gone higher on the ratio here, six to one. I really liked it on six to one. Got some tone I put into it. Can't lie to you, I think that sounds and feels brilliant. Let's try that on my uh, deluxe. Let's turn that off. Go, I'm going to go through the three compressors now. Um, hang on. So you can really hear the pick attack. You can definitely hear it's more squashed. going to do now is I'm going to use the first compressor I think let's try let's try doing something hang on I'm gonna go just gonna put on a little loop I'm gonna give myself a bit of reverb I'm gonna go to the twin I'm on the back pickup I'm gonna put on the compressor Okay, I'm just 
got to take my loop on the next round. Sorry about this. Staying with the same compressor, but changing to the uh, deluxe now. Changing side. me to cut through. So the only compressor that's on at the moment is the one at the end of the chain. Let's take that off and put a bass on. Let's put this on. down here. Let's turn on this first compressor. Let's squash ourselves a bit more. signal and hopefully that worked out and you could hear the differences when I was doing things what it was doing to my signal um, whilst I did it and hopefully YouTube's compressor hasn't compressed things too much that we couldn't hear those differences um, if you have any questions come from that let me know in the comments below I will be doing as I say a deep dive into a multi-band compression uh, X comp and bass comps in separate videos so uh keep eyes open for that but by the way last night when i was playing around i might have found a cloud reverb oh dear gonna be doing that in the next video catch you later bye